Well, we're on our way to Stanley. It's good to see the Tasmanians turned on the uh, weather for us. Well, a bit like Melbourne or Victoria, where it's four seasons in one day. It's supposed to be in summer. I don't think Tasmania's had a summer. We're about five kilometres out of Stanley, and it's a bit of a point or a bit of a tip. So we've got water over to the left, and I believe there's water to the right. In the distance, you can see the uh, what they call the nut, which is a volcanic plug. It's a bit like Tasmania's version of Ayers Rock. Now apparently you can walk up it, but Roz is keen on getting the chairlift, so I, I think I'll <laughs> side with Roz and we'll just get the old chairlift Yeah, Roz is keen there. on getting the chairlift. Yeah, right, Dave. I think he's had too many of his uh, Cadbury chocolates, so he needs to take the chairlift. Maybe we'll have a walk around once we get to the top on the chairlift. As if. But at the moment we're heading to um, Stanley RV Rec Ground. It's right next to the golf club and apparently it's $10 a night. So hopefully there's some space there for us. Apparently it's a uh, very good eat seafood out here. A couple of good little restaurants. Very fresh and very good seafood. Oh, there's the nut guys. And look at below it. Little town of Stanley. Look at all the caravans. No room for us, so I have to come back and park here. Okay, guys, we're heading into the rec ground at Stanley, right next to the golf club. Ten dollars per night, fifty dollars for seven nights. Lost, I was lost without any direction. Had a line so many times, but I needed attention. So guys, we've just got on the uh, chairlift at the nut and we're making our way to the top. We're the first ones here for the day. Oh, it's just started spinning, I think. No, that was just me. Obviously, it'll be a much better view on our way down down behind us where we just come from and you can see the township in the background of Stanley. The winds are supposed to pick up after 11 o'clock so that's why we thought we'd get up here early and get this over and done with because they will close the chairlift if it does get too windy. Yeah and if that's the case you've then got to walk up but um, I was all keen for the walk this morning done my stretches and then Ross said do we really have to walk? I said ah oh, it's all right we'll get the chairlift. I'm calling BS on that one. Had to let go, oh, oh, cause something's broken. And I'm the okay, so we're now up on the nut. That's looking back to the township of Stanley. Out there, I'm assuming just over the horizon would be Australia. It only takes about 30 to 40 minutes to walk around depending on how often you stop. What do we got here? At war with the weeds. Greek philosopher Socrates was found guilty of hearsay in 399 BC. His sentence was death and he chose to drink hemlock. I'm guessing that's hemlock. Horrible hemlock, not all bad. Hemlock is a herb that thrives in loose soil which is in abundance here because of the Moonbird burrows. It is very poisonous and can kill you if eaten. However, it is also used to make medicine for conditions such as asthma, anxiety, and can even help with achy joints. So here is the uh, Stanley Trig Point at 143 meters. When you'll do better without me, without me. Oh, look, Roz. Roz, it's a nut on a nut. <laughs> a 
gotcha. Not really. Not really? <laughs> not really. <laughs> not, not on a nut. Not really. So this is coming back to the other side. The wind's picked up. I can see a Roz down there in the distance. I'll be waiting for a uh, selfie with me, I dare say. Beautiful. Well worth the walk, well worth the visit. Living on the edge. The rocky edges of the nut are home to two endangered species. The first is the perennial everlasting paper daisy, commonly known as the hoary sunray. Smiling backwards, the other endangered species is the misoloma weldy, a snail known as the Stanley pinwheel, which has only ever been found here at the nut. You are unlikely to see one as they are extremely small, about one millimetre across, but they are amongst a handful of snails in the world whose shells spirals anti-clockwise. Mm, how cool. And this is a gorgeous view. Fisherman's Wharf lookout. Gorgeous view. Behind day. Yeah, to become better. But I'll die again if I said it, it'll last forever I know I make mistakes, it's just the way I am That's why you have to know, yeah There's not a So guys, if you walk the nut clockwise, you'll be coming down these stairs If you come the opposite direction, obviously, you go up be the ones to say no. mm -hmm. but I have Tatlow's Beach Lookout. Another lookout on top of the nut. Oh, oh no. feel that wind. Oh. the chairlift on the way back down from the nut. We've done the two kilometre walk around, checked out all the lookouts. What do you think? Yeah, no, it was good. It was really good. Now it's the nice windy trip back down. Definitely worth doing. Yeah. If you're up this neck of the woods or even if you're in Devonport or Lonnie, it's only about an hour and a half I think out of uh, Devonport. So it's worth shooting over and having a look. There's some people walking up and walking down. Looking down at the car park. It was uh, $19. $19 return, or if you do walk to the top and want to get the lift down, it's $12 back. There's our car and caravan down below in the car park. Beautiful, gorgeous view out there. And that's the little town of um, Stanley. Never. I know I make mistakes, it's just the way I am That's why you have to know, yeah There's not a part of me that wants to say no
So guys, Dave and I are down at Arthur River and we've come down to the edge of the world viewing platform. Just looking around. There is wood washed up everywhere. Goes right along the coast, right over the back there. And all across the other side on the sand. As far as you can see, there's piles of wood. Pretty amazing. I don't know why they call it the edge of the world, because uh, the world's round. It's not actually flat. There's wood everywhere. So we're at the edge of the world. Yeah. Are we gonna fall, we're going to fall off or what? I yeah. thought the earth was round, not, not flat. Yeah. <laughs> Must be a Tasmanian thing. <laughs> Edge of the world, northwest coast Tasmania. I cast my pebble onto the shore of eternity to be washed by the ocean of time. It has shape, form and substance. It is me. One day I will be no more, but my pebble will remain here on the shore of eternity. Mute witness for the eons that today I came and stood at the edge of the world. Brian Inder. Morning guys, we're down at Arthur River Cruises. This morning Dave and I are heading off on a Arthur River Cruise, the deluxe version. It did cost us $160 each. Okay guys, this is the Arthur River Cruises menu for the gourmet lunch. So Perry meats, Cape Brim, prime scotch fillet, award-winning lamb sausage, homemade coleslaw and sweet potato quinoa salad, jack potato, Lettuce, feta, cheese, tomato and beetroot, fresh bread roll, homemade relish and other condiments, homemade dessert, wine, hot drinks, water and juice. So this is the deluxe cruise leaving at 10 o'clock, right, returning at 3. It's $160 per person. You cruise upstream to the Arthur Franklin River Junction to the Warra Landing. Local produce, cheese platter and bubbles on board for morning tea. Enjoy a gourmet barbecue lunch served in the peaceful rainforest of Warra Landing and you get a guided rainforest walk to the Warra Falls through pristine forest. But if you do want to book, there's the phone number up there. I'll put it down below anyway. 0427 885 792. Today's weather's just weird. It's sunny, it's cold, it's overcast, the sun comes out again. Let's just hope the sun follows us but I'm bringing a beanie and an extra jacket.
it's pulled up here at Warra Landing. Beautiful little spot. They've got their own private barbecue area. Reflections River Cruises. And you follow this little walkway through to the hut.
Uh, we're on the Carina uh, barge or ferry. It was $33 for our vehicle, $28 for a smaller vehicle. That's one way. But uh, we're going across, we're just having a beer at the pub. And uh, apparently it was just saying they'll give us a free return ticket to come back across. So that's all right, 33 bucks both ways. Been out for a while. No. Kayaks for hire. Good accommodation. Pub. Tarkine Hotel. Karina history. So in 1881, the settlement of Karina was founded when a truck was cut through the Waratah, through from Waratah, and a government store was built to service the nearby mining fields. Feelings. Well, it's just another Friday in paradise. So bring your aching, because you know this party won't stop. windmills and these are on some cattle farmers property and he's getting paid how much thirty thousand or thirty two thousand dollars per windmill every year wow that's a, a really good extra income if you've got a massive property like he has apparently look at the view out there look at the water there's some of his cows there there's his cows so he must be what, he's obviously a dairy farmer. Beef, no, he's beef. Oh, beef? Yeah, he sells his cattle. Beef gets farmer? Up and makes steaks. Beef farmer, and um, yeah, he's got windmills, the wind farm on his property as extra income. But looking straight ahead, the view of the water, oh, it's amazing. Welcome to Granville Harbour. So this is on the west coast of Tassie, down south, just above Strawn. Yeah, it seems a lot more organised down here than Trial Harbour. Trial Harbour, there's a lot of shacks around that they're just plonked anywhere and everywhere. But here it looks like they're more allocated spot, like like um, sites, home sites, blocks. They call this up here Million Dollar Row. These ones up here at the front. Beautiful view of the ocean.
Hey guys, hope you've enjoyed this episode. It's that time again, joke time with Dave. Hey Roz. Yeah Dave. Have you ever heard of Murphy's Law? Is that where if something could go wrong, it will go wrong? That is correct. Have you heard of Cole's Law? Nope. Thinly sliced cabbage covered in mayonnaise. Catches. <laughs> Coleslaw. <laughs>